after the hour of 12 noon. Let's see, it's uh, February the 22nd, 1900 and... 88. Sure, you didn't know that until I told you, right? Blaster with you on the talk of Tampa Bay. Until 4, as I am every weekday. This isn't working. I, excuse me a second. I've got to turn on my headphones, but I have to stand up to do it and kind of reach over. So you guys don't go very far, okay? Hold, hold, hold on right there. Let's see. Ah, yeah, that's better. That's better. I don't know why it is. I just can't talk unless I can hear myself through the headphones. Where were we? Okay. It is a Monday. There are a number of things on the top of my mind. It'll be somewhat of an open program today, although with a little bit of guidance, at least I would hope so, because I have what really boil down to three issues to discuss with you, or maybe one and a half. I don't know. You can kind of figure it out yourself. The first one starts out with a letter that I received on Friday that I'd like to share with you. It simply reads, Mr. Bob Lasseter. You have been reluctant to discuss the Israeli-Palestinian conflict on the very rare occasions when a caller attempts to express any criticism of Israel. It invariably ends with your becoming angry and cutting them off with a label of anti-Semitism. This defensive attitude of Israel on your part, I believe, has discouraged other callers. I'm going to stop as we go through this letter. This is one point I'm going to stop. I haven't been reluctant at all to discuss it. I've discussed it every time it has come up. And every time it has come up, it has been from an anti-Semite, as this letter is. And I shall prove it at the end of the letter. May I express my views on this very disturbing crisis? The U.S. has done nothing to stop the uncontrolled epidemic of violence by Israeli Gestapo-like troops on the Palestinians. Well, that's true, nor is there anything they can do, but that's besides the point. The U.S. who has proposed, or excuse me, professed support for human rights recently stated Israel is having a problem with human rights, but not on the same scale as other nations. What more besides killings, clubbings, brutal beatings, burying young Palestinians alive does a nation have to do to qualify as a terrorist nation that is blatantly violating human rights of people who have no right or freedom? What more does Israel have to do than its appalling disregard for human rights and continue to brutalize and commit atrocities on the people whose land they occupy? Well, first of all, clubbings, burying people alive are not official Israeli policy, are they? Of course they aren't. And on top of that, the nation is ripped right down the middle on this very issue, but something the letter writer conveniently disregards. Where is the outcry against the cruel fascist measures? Where is the moral indignation? Well, the outcry is in Israel. The moral indignation is in Israel, as well as every other nation on the face of the earth, letter writer. But let's go back to the letter. Those who defend or passively accept this criminal behavior must, like Waldheim, bear a degree of moral guilt. Well, there's probably a great deal of truth in that last statement. Why is the U.S. intimidated into vetoing the U.N. resolutions? And why is the U.S. silenced by Jewish pressure not to openly and forcefully condemn Israel? Well, I suppose what the letter writer is implying is that very strong Jewish lobby. I guess it also, of the very strong Jewish lobby is also in effect in China and the Soviet Union, too. They haven't exactly done anything either, have they, letter writer? Israel is being ruled by leaders of a gangster mentality whose cruel policies of repression are supported by its people calling for even harsher measures. That's a barefaced lie. There are some people in Israel who love what's going on. There are many people in Israel who deplore it, as well as Jews worldwide fall into both categories. These so-called leaders whose egos have been so inflated to find themselves in a position of power are the same violent Gestapo mentality as the fascist regime who victimized them. Israel is breeding a generation of sadistic bullies. Well, I fear, letter writer, that you may be right on that, as well as a lot of other people fear the same thing, including many, many, many Jews. It is sickening and outrageous that the U.S. identifies with Israel and that the Israelis, the great manipulators, can intimidate the president, the Congress, politicians through their powerful Jewish lobby. Ah, there we go. There are the words Jewish lobby. As I pointed out a little bit earlier, I suppose it's the same Jewish lobby that has, in essence, silenced the Chinese and the Soviets as well. Where is the president's passionate and dedicated support for freedom fighters? Or is it only for Nicaragua? What hypocrisy? I would agree, letter writer. It is sickening and disgusting that Jewish organizations try to defend their criminal behavior using slogans, history lessons, and biblical mutterings to drown out the atrocities they are inflicting. Let's go back over that last sentence. It is sickening and disgusting that Jewish organizations try to defend their criminal behavior using slogans, history lessons, and biblical mutterings to drown out the atrocities they are inflicting. It is also increasingly tiresome and even pathetic to hear U.S. officials repeat their own defensive slogans. Israel is our friend. We have a special relationship with Israel. 
All of the presidential candidates have blatantly ignored these crimes and have not even acknowledged this crisis. Why does the U.S. continue to fund this shameful and immoral violation of human rights? Well, I'm not knowing. I did, didn't know that the U.S. was funding it, sir. Or at least I'm assuming it's a sir. The letter is signed C. Russ. And I didn't really know that the presidential candidates have anything whatsoever to do with it. But there is a P.S. to this letter. And here is where the anti-Semitism comes in. Plain, loud, and clear, which discredits everything that the letter writer has to say, including the handful of good points that he or she made. P.S. May I add, Bob, you really don't have to worry as to whether Jews are going to heaven. They have lost their souls. Period. Okay, uh, let's hear from anybody out there who is in favor of the activity going on in Israel right now concerning the Palestinians and the occupied lands. I don't hear any. May we assume then that virtually everyone is opposed. I think we may assume that. And may we hear from anyone, including this letter writer, who knows how to stop it. I defy you, letter writer. Tell me how I can stop it. Tell me how Reagan can stop it. Tell me how Congress can stop it. Tell me how the presidential candidates can stop it. And I'll be delighted to give you four hours, because I think all men of goodwill would like to see it stopped. Okay? Now, letter writer, your letter shall get the treatment it deserved in the first place. You anti-Semitic pig. Okay, there we go. Now let's go down to some other business here. Jimmy Swaggart. I mean, come on, how could I possibly go through the program without mentioning Jimmy Swaggart? <sighs> First of all, Jimmy Swaggart isn't going anywhere, so don't get all upset. You know, his tearful confession yesterday up there on the pulpit, wasn't that really touching? It was almost as touching as some of his sermons are. Not quite as good, but almost. And Swaggart isn't going anywhere. He's not stepping down from his television show. No, 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 no. He's just going to step down from preaching on Sundays to an audience of five, six, seven thousand people, but not the big audience. And besides, there's absolutely nothing the Assemblies of God can do to keep him off of the air. Utterly, totally, completely nothing. All they can do is take away his credentials as though he needed them. Jimmy Swaggart is a two-bit two -bit hypocrite, plain and simple. Believe it or not, I feel sorry for the poor sucker. I feel very, very sorry for him and other people like him. Jimmy Swaggart was quoted this morning as saying that he has had a fascination with pornography his entire life. Yeah, I know he has. And anybody who's ever listened to him should know that Jimmy Swaggart has had a fascination with pornography. As a matter of fact, virtually everyone who runs around being so obsessed with other people's looking at pornography has himself or herself a fascination with pornography well first of all the touching confession yesterday was absolutely disgusting how it was videotaped and then released to the networks perfect lighting perfect shots oh and jimmy turned around to his wife and said i've sinned against you please forgive me and she bites her bottom lip and nods up and down. This man is a circus. He has been a circus since day one. He continues to be a circus. But I do feel sorry for him. Now, I don't want to talk to Harlow. Hang up on Harlow. Tell him never to call again. Good grief. Oh. Anyway, where was I? This man is a circus and has been a circus since day one. But I do feel sorry for him. I feel sorry for Jimmy Swaggart because he doesn't even know his own heart. He doesn't even know his own mind. It was rather interesting yesterday at 11 o'clock I turned on the television like a lot of other people for the Jimmy Swaggart show only to find the regularly scheduled show where amongst other things there was this great appeal about his $200,000 a day deficit and how Satan, oh, it's Satan out to ruin me. It's Satan out to take away my church. It's Satan who's out to take away Jesus from you. Well, the true fact of the matter is it's Jimmy himself. Jimmy and his lies, Jimmy and his ego, and Jimmy and his own sickness. Oh, not so much the sickness that gives him the fascination with pornography. That, that is a sickness. But a sickness with telling you how to live. His sickness with being a hypocrite. Speaking of hypocrites, a defender of Jimmy Swaggart's this morning on another show, David Fowler's show, I heard it driving into work. 
This pencil neck geek, Tom from Lutz, and why in God's name my colleagues continue to allow this man on the air is beyond me. He is boring, and he's a liar. But Tom from Lutz and Jimmy Swaggart have something in common. They both profess this great born-again religion. They both profess this true, absolute belief in the one and only God, and they don't believe a word of it. I'll prove to you that very simple fact. Yesterday, in Jimmy's taped, pre-taped television show, he spoke about the coming of the rapture. And he took his glasses off and he stared into the camera, just like, you know, when he's confessing sin, stared into the camera with all sincerity, the necktie undone, the beads of sweat on the forehead, maybe, maybe even there were tears rolling down his cheeks. And he said, the rapture is coming at any time, maybe, maybe within the next minute, maybe within the next hour, maybe within the next year, but the rapture is coming plain and simple, and anybody who is in sin... Anybody who is in sin will not go to heaven with Jesus. And there he stood knowing full well that by any standard of his church, by any standard of his belief, he was in sin and couldn't have cared less. Because he knew that you didn't know. And he obviously doesn't believe that his Savior knows. And he obviously doesn't believe that his Savior is coming. Because if he really did, then A, he wouldn't have been in a position to be in sin, and B, he would have done something about it. But he didn't until he was caught. And then he magnanimously comes before the nation in a carefully tape-recorded, carefully rehearsed, carefully staged confession. Where the hell was he three days ago? Four days ago? A week ago? A month ago? Two months ago? Three months ago? Four months ago? Because the incident goes back at least four months. Bare minimum. And good old Tommy from Lutz, the pencil-necked geek lying SOB. Yeah, lying SOB. That's right, Tommy. You want proof that you don't believe either, Tommy? Well, I'll give it to you. You, sir, are a liar. An unmitigated liar. A malicious, a vicious liar. You have attempted on this program to discredit me with what you knew to be at the time that you said them and what you still continue know to know were lies. Well, Tommy, I'm going to prove to you beyond the shadow of a doubt that you don't believe a word of what you profess to believe. Tommy, I'll refer you to your Bible. And I'll refer you to the area of the Bible where it says that you should confess your sins. And I refer you to the area of the Bible that says wherever and whenever possible you should come before those that you have sinned against and ask their forgiveness. And that if you don't, you can't be forgiven. Well, Tommy, if you believe the rapture, if you believe salvation, if you believe in the Ten Commandments, I defy you, punk. I defy you, you little pencil-necked lying punk. to come before me and to confess and to ask my forgiveness. Because if you don't, Tommy, your Bible says you can't be forgiven. And if you're not forgiven of your sins, Tommy, you ain't gone to paradise, are you? I believe you have the phone numbers, Tommy. If you've ever dreamt about owning a private getaway after the hour of 12 noon, but Jimmy's handful of lunatics who want to follow them all you have to do is make religious broadcasters subscribe to the exact same standards as commercial broadcasters have to do. You don't have to pass any laws against religion on television or on the radio, nor should there be any laws, by the way, against religion on television or the radio. But there should be standards. And if you were to apply to these religious broadcasters the exact same standards as are applied to commercial broadcasters, it would wipe them out over 
night. It is a reasonable thing to do, and it is a necessary thing to do. These men do serious damage to people. Tens of thousands, possibly hundreds of thousands of human beings. Human beings are sick today because they weren't swift enough to see through Jimmy Swaggart and they bought everything he said. And damn it, that's not fair. That is not fair. And I just kind of wonder, especially those of you in the clergy who are listening to this program and listen to it every day, I just kind of wonder how gutsy you are. I wonder if you have enough guts to stand up. I wonder how sincere you are about caring for other souls. I wonder how much you really care about the sheep being fleeced. And it's real simple. All you have to do is make sure that no religious broadcaster makes a claim that he cannot substantiate. Plain and simple. No more claims of financial blessings for people who give to this ministry. No more claims of healings over the air. No more claims of demons being driven out of people. Real simple. Because that is the backbone of television evangelism. Greed and selfishness. People do not send Jimmy Swaggart money for his good works. They send him money to buy their way into heaven. People did not send Jim Baker money for his good works. They did it because it kind of made them feel good. And nobody ever sent Pat Robertson a penny for his good works. They did it for either his political swill or for his promises of financial blessings or healings. And if you have the guts to stand up and say enough is enough of this, then I'd have great respect for you. Jim, quick. Believe it or not, it really is all kind of tied in. Jeannie Pugh, who is the, I guess, religious editor for the St. Petersburg Times, if not the religious editor, at least she writes a column every week in their Saturday morning religion section, has a really bone-chilling column in last Saturday's paper. I'm not going to read it to you, but I will read you the first two paragraphs because it all fits in. Is it unbiblical to be in favor of social security or equal pay for women? Is it unchristian to oppose U.S. aid to the Contras in Nicaragua? Is it immoral to be opposed to capital punishment? Is it anti-freedom to oppose the deployment of nuclear weapons in outer space? The answer to each of these questions is yes, according to the Biblical Scorecard, the 1988 edition of the Presidential Biblical Scorecard, a slick 40-page magazine written and published by self-described Christian activist David Bowsiger of Costa Mesa, California. Okay, so there's one, you know, lunatic out there? Well, no, there isn't. There are lots of them. As a matter of fact, hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of copies of the biblical scorecard was distributed by someone, strangely enough, in Iowa and in New Hampshire. By the way, who won the biblical scorecard? Pat Robertson with a score of 95%. The Reverend Jesse Jackson, how do you think, how do you think the Reverend Jesse Jackson scored on the presidential biblical scorecard? Zero. Zero. It's another reason why these TV evangelists have to go. They ain't selling religion, they're selling right-wing politics, each and every one of the major ones. Each and every one of the major TV evangelists are selling right-wing politics, which has no business whatsoever being mixed with religion. You want to get rid of them? It's real easy. Just have the guts. Just have the guts to stand up and say it is only right, it is only fair, it is only proper that religious broadcasters have to stick with the same standards as commercial broadcasters. I.e., you make a claim, you have to be able to back it up. 
if you have the guts. Now, there's not a damn thing that I, Bob Lasseter, can do about it. There's not a damn thing that a handful of agnostics or atheists or ultra-liberal religious people can do about it. The only people who can have an effect are the mainstream people. Who, by and large, are just as enraged with this kind of conduct, with this kind of philosophy. But, you know, geez, just don't. You know, gosh, we shouldn't cast you know, stones you know, you live without sin, you know. And, oh, gosh, and it's other people's religion. No, it isn't other people's religion. It's not other people's religion at all. You're free to stand in church and make the most outrageous claims and drive demons into pigs or whatever else you want to do. But damn it, when you're doing it on the public airwaves, you are reaching millions upon millions of people who ain't quite swift enough to be able to figure out just where it is that you're coming from and just exactly what it is that you have behind your act. And there is no self-respecting minister in any mainstream religion who would stand up in his pulpit and make any of the claims that are made every single day, hour after hour, day in, day out, minute in, minute out, over so-called religious television and radio stations. There's not one of you. There is not one of you who would stand up in the pulpit in the Episcopal Church or the Catholic Church or the Baptist Church or virtually any church and suggest that someone who joins your church will be blessed with increased stock values. There's not one of you who would suggest that somebody who joined your church will get rich. There's not one of you who would suggest that someone who joins your church will be healed of cancer. There's not one of you who would stand up front, in front of your congregation and purport to drive demons out of people. You're all appalled by such activity. Well, I challenge you, starting here, starting now, you can make the difference to stand up and say, enough is enough of this crap. These are public airwaves. They belong to everyone. We're not talking about opinion here. We're talking about unsubstantiated claims. Ridiculous claims. That's not opinion. This is a sideshow. You know it as well as I know it. And you could put an end to it, if you really cared. You could put an end to it if you really cared about people and their emotions and whether or not they were being led astray. You could really put an end to it if you really cared. Couldn't you? I wonder if you have the guts to do it. I wonder if you have the moral fiber to do it. To stand up once and for all in public. Not in private. Not behind a closed door. But in public. As the true moral and spiritual leaders you're supposed to be. And denounce these sideshows. Denounce these politicians who hide behind the Bible. Denounce these greedy, sick pigs who will fleece other people without batting an eyelash. Who have no right to be leading millions upon millions of people. And especially especially on the public airwaves. If they want to rent a hall and make these outrageous claims, hey, great, this is America. They should be allowed to. And I would do nothing to stop them from it. But it is not unreasonable in any shape, manner, or form to suggest, to ask, to plead that these men, and sometimes women, be asked to do one simple thing, back up their claims. Because if they can't back up their claims, if, if they can't make those claims, that will put them out of business. 
without passing any laws against religion, without, without setting any regulations about what can be said and what can't be said concerning religion. This has nothing to do with religion. God does not reward people with increased stock value for sending a contribution into a TV minister. You know it, and I know it. But there are a few souls out there who don't. God does not send special messages to blonde-headed bimbos on the 700 Club about miraculous cures of cancer in Iowa. You know it, and I know it. Oh, of course, you can only get the cure if you call in. This is outrageous. It has nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with faith. It has nothing to do with theology. I can't help but wonder how many men of the cloth during the course of the next three hours and 20 minutes will demonstrate just how much they care for the real souls in this world. Let me give you guys the telephone numbers. There's one, John in Dun Eden. Hi, John. You're on the air, WFL. Got a lot of Johns around here. We right? sure do today. So, uh, how is everything with Mr. Lassiter? Uh, fine, John. Uh, listen, I knew that God was going to get these guys. <laughs> well, you know, you, you say you uh, knew that God was going to get these guys. One, one would have to think. One would have to. One would have to think. You know, since this kind of nonsense has been going on since the church was first put together. That, uh, you know, apparently God just doesn't, doesn't mind, or else he's powerless to do anything about it. Well, here at WFLA. Yeah, uh, I know where you're all coming from. I used to talk just like you guys did. Really? I'm Funny a, you don't sound like you used to sound like me. I'm a born-again Christian now, and mm -hmm. I like Christian TV. And when we first became born-again, Jimmy Swagger was a big influence on us, us because he had Boy, don't you feel kind of foolish? Pardon? Don't you feel kind of foolish now, Pat? No, uh, because well, wait a second. You don't feel you don't feel foolish that you bought a message from a man that didn't believe in the message. The message was from God. Oh, I see. And you know, we went to see. Gee, him. don't you think God could have picked somebody to give the message who believed in it? Oh, God picks all kinds of people. He sure does, apparently. But you know, He knows we all sin, mm -hmm. and God's going to forgive him. And well, that, that's you know that 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 has nothing whatsoever to do with with the facts and the point of this particular case. You bought a message from a messenger I who didn't believe it. in it. He is good. I'd feel like a real fool if I had done that. Well, I'm not a fool. Didn't and say you I, were. I said I'd you know, feel like a real fool if Tampa, I had done that. And he saved hundreds of people in Tampa. He saved? How could he possibly save anybody when he doesn't believe? He does believe. He doesn't believe. Patty believe proved it. it. You can believe in sin. Patty doesn't believe it. He proved it to you. I believe. I believe and I sin and if Pat, you don't believe, I watched yesterday something that was taped just a couple of weeks ago from Jimmy Swaggart with mm -hmm. tears running down his cheeks, the mm -hmm. sweat pouring down his brow, the, the, the shirt open, the tie pulled down. Uh -huh. He said he pointed to the audience and he said he came to a to an absolute halt. Well, and he know, said, I'll tell you one thing. He, I'll tell you one thing. The rapture the rapture is about to happen at any time. Yeah, he's at right. At any time. Yeah, he's right. And anybody who is with sin That's will right. not go. That's right. And you better get rid of your sin. You better get rid of God. And there this hypocrite was filled with sin. He didn't believe it. Well, listen. He I was selling you something, Pat, and you bought it. How much have you sent him? I've, I, I don't support him now, but we support a lot of teams. Well, how much, did, how much did you send him in the past? Oh, I don't know. A little bit. Uh, why'd you stop sending it? Because once you get saved, he is good for, like, people that are not saved. He's uh, good at the beginning. And then oh, so you, don't care, about, so you don't care about people who aren't saved, then? Pardon? You don't care about people oh, who aren't yes, saved. That's why we support TV ministers. We support well, why Well, why did you stop sending the money to Jimmy if, he, if he's good for people who aren't saved? Well, we just started watching something else. You know, he's oh, good for other so. people. But he, you know, we don't agree but you with don't, everything you don't feel, he says. You don't, you don't feel any need to support ministers who are out there trying to get people who aren't saved. You just want to support ministers no. who minister to people who are all, saved. All, all these TV ministers have saved people from going to hell. Uh-huh. Yeah, we've supported PTS. But I thought, I thought Jimmy was better than some at saving people who weren't saved. Yeah, he, he probably is. Probably, you know, like well, that's, and that's why the you alcoholic, don't support him. the druggies, and, you know, people that... He's just... 
he appeals to certain people. God gives yeah, different Yeah, he sure people. does. Appeals and, to certain people. Uh, you know, I thank God for Jim Baker for PTL because that's a 24-hour Christian network. Mm-hmm. And I can get up at night when I'm racked with pain and I can watch Christian TV. I don't mm-hmm. like to watch Trash. And, you know, I support Trash TV with my products that I buy. Wait, you don't like to watch Trash? No, I don't watch Trash on TV. You don't like to watch Trash on TV and, right. and yet you used to watch Jimmy Baker? Yes, I watch Jim Baker. Well, I thought, no, now you're contradicting yourself. You said you didn't like to watch trash on TV. Listen, he's made a mistake. We all make mistakes. Jesus, yeah, he got caught. Jesus was the only perfect man, and we killed him. So you know what people are going to say if somebody makes a mistake. Well, that certainly says it all, doesn't it, Pat? Attention, business people. I want to talk with you for three hours. Oh, we started talking on the air about an official Bob Lasseter fan club. It was months ago. Since then, we have received so many phone calls that our switchboard was shut down twice. My wife's tired the of calling. The phone company has asked us to make this announcement. Please, do not call the switchboard regarding the Bob Lasseter fan club. I can tell you that in just a few days, we will make a major announcement about the new Bob Lasseter fan club. That's what he said a week ago. Stand by for the information you've been calling for. And thanks for listening to 970 WFLA. Yeah, but don't hold your breath. 24 minutes after WFLA. Can you say anything nice about the fundamentalists? Oh, do, sure. Do they do anything good for society? Well, they certainly do. They give me a wealth of material. Right. Uh, how yes, is that it, is right. How is it that you can dump on the Christians all day long, but when you get a letter on Israeli atrocities, you just tear it up and throw it, throw it away? I believe I read it, and I believe I answered it as I went along. And, well, you didn't really. Then you and besides, I don't, I, besides, I don't dump on Christians. I dump on radical Christians. Uh huh. And then you just tear up and throw away the Israeli. No, I crumbled issue. it up. I, no, I didn't t- 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 tear up the issue. I crumpled up the letter. Did you write the letter, Jim? No, I didn't. Ah, uh, well, I crumpled up the letter from the subhuman pig who wrote it. It was an excellent letter. I agree with everything, and I'll defend well, anything I, I, in the letter. I beg, I beg your pardon, Jim. I agreed with a number of points in the letter. It was the P.S. to the letter that clearly indicated where the letter writer was coming from. That the, Jew, that the Jews were losing their souls on the West right. Bank? That's what Tom Landry no, no, said. No, 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 that, that, that's, no. That's not what the letter writer said. What the letter writer said is that all Jews have no souls. So I needn't worry about them going to heaven. Well, he, didn't, he didn't say that. That's not how you read it. I beg your pardon. That's what the letter said. He said that they were losing did you their ri- souls. Did you write the letter, Jim? Over there. Did you write no, the letter, Jim? Rudy or somebody? Ross? Did you write the letter, Jim? No, 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 no. Well, then... My name is not Rudy or Ross. Then or... you don't know, I guess, what the letter said. Let us go next to Rick. Come out of this. It might not all be quite as bad as it sounds. Uh, just like with Ted Kennedy, that was all covered up. Nobody's ever said that. There are Catholic priests that are, uh, you've heard rules. Oh, hey, them. hey, Bob, come on, get the religious bigotry in now. Bring in the no, priests. No, I'm just saying that. Hey, how about the priests that molest little boys, Bob? Huh? You no, want to talk about that? about that. We're talking... How about the priests that uh, molest married women, when Bob? Up, huh? When I called up, yeah, I called Yeah, come on, Bob. Let, let's talk about some more liberals with problems, too, Bob, huh? No I wonder you love Jimmy Swaggart. He's a bigot, and so are you. Get off my phone, you jerk. Too bad we didn't find out which domination you're a retired minister from, you bigot. How despicable. How despicable. To slander another religion to make excuses for your boy. Guess you saved a lot of souls too, huh, Bob? You're a disgrace. An absolute disgrace. Don't ever call the show again. You're worse than swaggered. Gloria and Carolyn in Newport Ritchie. Hi, Carolyn. You're on the air at WFLA. Hi, Mad Dog. Hi. I've listened to your program this afternoon, and I think you and I have a disagreement. I heard you say a while ago that you think generally people are intelligent enough to know the difference between hypocrisy and or reality and fantasy. Mm-hmm. Did you say that? Well, yes, more or less. Well, I'm going to disagree with you, probably for the first time. I do not think that highly of the general intelligence level of the American populace. And I'm not just speaking about on the subject of religion, politics, sociological problems, uh, the minimum wage being raised uh, for a good purpose and so forth. <clears throat> but if you were talking about television a while ago, and I thought about this, most people who watch television... Mad Dog, a lot, are bombarded with visual images, right? That's what it's all about. Exactly. 
and I think there is a great need in this society of ours even if these people were taken off television like Swaggart and uh, Tammy and Jim etc etc someone else would come along to take their place and they would be just as much a charlatan as these people are well, not if not if people would follow the Lassiter plan because the Lassiter plan would call you know for truth and preaching. Oh, but can we get that on television ever? <laughs> sure, we could if we really wanted it. Would I mean, we, we it? already have it. And as a matter of fact, it wouldn't take any type of regulation. Mm -hmm. All it would take are cable operators and television station owners and managers who applied the exact same Standard. standards exactly. to well, both commercial and religious broadcasters. There we agree. But I was thinking <clears throat> about our society as a whole. And I know that you know the statistics about the functionally illiterate uh, numbers in our society. Mm -hmm. Well, if you took, set those aside and you take all the people of a generation beyond the age of 55 in this country, the majority of my generation is woefully uneducated, knows little or nothing about history, has no critical thinking or comparative thinking. Would you agree with that? Basically. All right. So that's where I'm coming from. And if you take my generation of people and you add to those the functionally illiterate people of all ages and you submit them to someone like um, Swaggart and so forth, how are they <clears throat> even emotionally or, or intellectually able, Bob, to know the difference. Well, okay, the, the reason I hedged around the word intelligence is intelligence, at least to me, implies... The ability wow. to reason. Well, yeah, it, it's, an, it's an acquired skill. Yes, indeed. And to call people, but that's not what it implies to most people. I agree What, what it implies you. to most people is a, uh, uh, a gift. Yes. You know, you're either smart or you're not. Exactly. And, you know, smart... You know, what, what is smart? Again, for in some areas, it's an acquired skill. In other areas, it's a gift. And I yes. did not wish to imply, because I don't believe firmly in my heart, that the people who follow the Jimmy Swaggarts and the Pat Robertsons are inherently dumb, you know, incapable uh, because well, I'm of... Going to, I'm going to disagree with you. Of gray matter. In my opinion, and you may disagree with this, the people who follow the Swaggarts and the Bakers, etc., are incapable <clears throat> of critical thinking. Well, at least at this point in their lives yes. they are. I'm not sure that it's uh, okay. you know, something that can't be corrected. In, in other words, if Swaggart or the Bakers or whomever, a politician, states something as an absolute, these people do not have the uh, background or the ability, reasoning-wise, Bob, to, to question, to do critical thinking, to, to not accept the absolute, but to say... What is the alternative to this? And, uh, and shouldn't there be one? Do you see what I'm trying to yes, say? Yes, I do. All right. And I am not quite as optimistic as you, which surprises me, about this inability, generally speaking, among the American populace. Politicians prostitute because they feed upon this inability. Uh, television evangelists feed upon this. Even a talk show host may do this, as you well know. If you got on there, on your program, with your personality, your persona, and you spouted crap, okay, you have no idea the numbers of people who would believe this, Bob, because they're totally incapable of saying Oh, I'm way. very well aware of it. I'm very well aware of, you know, the fact that I could literally get people to send me money. Oh, absolutely. I'm more than aware of it. And this is what I'm trying to point out to you. We may damn people such as uh, Swagger, et cetera, et cetera, but we have met the enemy, and it is us, because we, as a people, <laughs> in my opinion, are, we have forgotten all about the value of of critical thinking, of questioning, and people, once that is in the psyche, Bob, there, then there is no comparative thinking, there is no alternative thinking, it is simply, this is an absolute, and the mind becomes narrower and narrower, and this is why I fear Pat Robertson. Do you understand what I'm saying? I sure do. Carolyn? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Let us go to John Shearer here at WFLA. Hello, Bob. Hi, David. How are you today? Fine, thank you. Good. Listen, Bob, uh, you don't really believe that uh, Jimmy Swaggart is a charlatan and a religious bigot. Sure I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. And you don't really believe that Pat Robertson 
is politically dangerous. Sure I do. Make your point, David. Time is running My out. My point is, sir, that I have no business stating what Bob Lasseter believes. Nor do you have any business stating what Jimmy Swaggart believes. Oh, but you can certainly comment on what you have heard me say, can't you? Yes, I can. And you can certainly be entitled to your opinion based upon what I have said but that you, you are have on personally the radio, heard. Sir, and you made the statement that Jimmy Swaggart does not believe what he preaches. That's right. You he's, don't he's, know demonst that. he's demonstrated it to me, sir. No, he didn't demonstrate oh, anything to you. Pardon, I doubt he if he did. even knows that you exist. Mr. I Lester. beg your pardon. He demonstrated it unequivocally. I doubt that he even knows that you exist. I don't care if he does. He has demonstrated to me unequivocally that he doesn't believe in what he preaches. And how is that? You know, I've gone through it a half a dozen times today, but David apparently are a little bit thick, so I'll make a special exception. <laughs> I sat there and watched Jimmy Swaggart in a pre-taped program yesterday tell me that the that the rapture was imminent and that anybody in sin would be absolutely out of luck. Wouldn't go up to heaven with the with the Savior. Unless and their sins were confessed and forgiven. That's right. Oh, and the there he was right in front of everybody. But how do you know, Mr. Lasseter? How do you know that he hasn't confessed and been forgiven his sin? I beg your pardon. How do you know that? He told me yesterday. He confessed it yesterday. He confessed it to his congregation and to the public at large. He did not confess it to you. I am confessed he may and have and his sins and to God and right and, after and, you. and in a very emotional way confessed it to his wife. I believe you'll find somewhere in the Bible but how that, do you know that I he believe. Hasn't shut up, with hey? the Lord. Shut up. <laughs> I shut believe. Me up, sis. I just did. Now you'll have to sit there and listen to me. I believe, sir, you will find somewhere in the Bible where you are admonished to go to the person you have sinned against and publicly confess your sin and ask them for forgiveness as well, which Jimmy Swaggart obviously didn't do until yesterday. And if he had done it before yesterday, then his whole charade in front of his congregation, in front of the videotape machine, was even more hypocrisy. And had you been a tad more polite, you would have had a chance to respond. This, Jimmy Swaggart, was living a double standard. And it doesn't matter whether he was set up or whether he wasn't, he sinned. And he brought a reproach on the gospel of Christ. And as far as I'm concerned, um, there may be a lot of people lost come the judgment day because of what he has done and the reproach he's brought. There will be a lot of people who won't believe because of seeing the sin that a man who set such high standards won't believe what? Pardon? Won't believe what? They won't come into the church. It will be hard for them to have confidence in what our local ministers, good ministers. Jim, Jimmy, who, Jimmy, Jimmy Swagger didn't try to bring anybody into the church. He tried to bring people into his mailing list. That's true. That's that's what I'm trying to say. Matter of fact, Jimmy Swagger stood on the he, stood he, on the stage week in, week out, day in, day out, damning, cursing. Uh, taking shots at virtually every known organized religion. He didn't try to bring anybody into the church. He tried to bring him into his mailing list, well, he which did. he then sold. He, he led people to believe that he was trying to bring them into the church. But as you said, he was trying to get them on the mailing list. He, he got a lot of money out of a lot of foolish people. I'm glad that I wasn't foolish enough to send money to him or any other TV evangelist. I feel like we should keep the money in the local churches. But all I'm saying is this. The man sinned. We should not, as church people, try to cover it up. And the fact that he was a well-renowned TV evangelist makes it even worse. He, Jim Baker, and all the rest, because um, it brings out, a great, it makes it seem like a greater sin to people, and it's harder for people who are not in a church to believe and accept what good local ministers are trying to teach. It tears down the moral of our country is what it boils down to. Yes, maybe God will forgive him, but I don't think he will ever have a place in TV ministry, a, a church ministry, or anything else like he should have. I think. Well, he, Gloria, Gloria, I, I'm not sure that it tears down the church. I'm not sure that it tears down the ministry. What it does is it points out a hypocrite, and I think that most people are intelligent enough to realize that hypocrites exist. And most people are intelligent enough, or maybe intelligent isn't the, isn't the best word in this situation. Most people are able, let me use that word, are able to spot a hypocrite from the beginning. Some of us aren't for the church, for religion, because it will greatly diminish the influence of one hypocrite. 
It may be good for those that are already in the church and believers, but for non-believers, I've already heard some people say, so this is religion, so this is Christianity. I live better than that. Why do I need to go to church? Why do I need to listen to the local minister? Well, Gloria, I'll bet you, you know, Nickel, they would have said the same thing last Monday. It could have been, but my answer to that, that was, you can't judge everybody in the church. You can't judge all of our local ministers or any of the ministers, for that matter, because of the sins of one or two people who were more interested in making money than living for Christ. Well, Gloria, anybody that would doesn't deserve your consideration anyway. But I thank you much for the time. Uh-huh. Be good. One line available. It is in Hillsborough County. John Sheeran has a WFLA traffic report. John?